Good day to you, Shadow Warrior Collectors. Shinobi One, back again in the official Shinobi One uniform. Um, hopefully, you've seen part one of the Sam Furstenberg interview. Uh, we kind of just did like a broad scope of everything that he's worked on and, uh, and kind of started getting into the nitty gritty of Ninja 3. And... Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a really great time visiting with him. An honor and a pleasure uh, talking with Sam and reminiscing about these movies. And, and uh, him sharing some, some things that some of us may already know, some of us may not already know. But part two is now upon us here where we're going to get to some of the burning questions that we had. Um... There were some scenes that were were there in Ninja 3 that never made it uh, to the finished product. Uh, we did get to see them in, uh, in some of the trailers. And there's also been some promo pictures. Uh, namely, the, the one scene that most of us uh, have on our minds is the, the flashback scene. Where Shokasugi is taking on a bunch of ninjas, including the black ninja himself and he ends up killing his father and then throwing a shuriken in shokasugi's eye and uh, there was a lot more to that scene um, now in the in the part two sam's going to go into more details as to why that scene never you know never made it into the finished product it really didn't come down to the fact of it being not fitting into the movie but really so much is just uh really in what canon has in their um their requirements when it comes to the numbers game so to speak when it comes to making a movie so unfortunately that scene what we see of it is just in that trailer um because i also asked which you'll see in part two about you know is there ever going to be uh, a director's cut or are these scenes that we saw in like Ninja 3 where that fight between uh, Shokasugi's character Yamada and the ninja and of course the black ninja will that ever be recovered um, also we've seen a lot in the Revenge of the Ninja trailer where there are some extra scenes that also didn't make it and a lot of it again is either due to the numbers portion of it when it comes to making a movie or something's being submitted to the rating system and the rating system sends back a movie saying nah it's a little too extreme or something to that effect so in part two uh you'll get to see that that's like the first question that pops up in, in the beginning of part two so if you've been looking to find answers about this because i know shokasugi's mentioned it mentioned it in his um in his latest q a sessions on his uh on his YouTube channel. Um, Sam kind of gives the other perspective of it as a director and as the, the administrators behind the film, you know, once actors do their scenes and stuff and, and so forth, you know, it goes to the people that work on the, the actual production of the film. And then when that's brought to the higher, higher ups, they give a, a yay or nay on certain things. So uh, Sam also goes into detail about another scene in Ninja 3 that, that didn't make it as well. Some of y'all may know about this scene. I never knew about it. So this was really, you know, awesome news to 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 have shared with us here through this through this interview. So also I um I did reach out to a few subscribers that I have regular conversations with to to submit some questions and so I was able to ask those questions. I had a bunch of questions for Sam for Ninja 3 that I was going to bring to the table, but I, again, I don't want this channel to be just about me because there's a lot of other passionate fans about Ninja fandom that are a part of this channel. So again, I want, I want to have that interaction with you guys. I want to have y'all involved with this channel as well. So that's why I reached out to a few of you when... When I finally started getting, you know, getting information with Sam about setting up this interview and I said, 
you know, I instant message a few of you because some of y'all were just conveniently within reach of me saying, hey, give me a question or two that you would like to ask Sam Furstenberg. And I'll, you know, I'll, uh, I'll try and make sure that it gets in and I'll name you, you know, I'll, I'll give a shout out to you guys as I ask the question. So for those of you that did submit questions, I was able to ask at least one question from each of you. Uh, I know some of you had a few questions, so I kind of, so I kind of had to just kind of pick some good ones because I didn't want to take up his entire day. I could take up his entire day if I, you know, if I had the opportunity, I'd be picking his brain still to the, you know, to this minute, you know, I just had the interview uh, yesterday, so I was really tired, and that's why you saw me in civvies last night when I uploaded the video, because I was, uh, I had to work, and I didn't have any sleep, because I have other things going on outside of, uh, outside of here that, that are kind of keeping me awake at night, so a little bit of stressors here and there, but then I had work, and then as soon as I got off work, I had to change and, and get on and, uh, and interview Sam, but it was such a great time, I had so much, uh, you know, so much to share and ask of him. But again, I didn't want to overdo it. Uh, I want to be able to uh, stay in his good graces and then also be able to, uh, you know, come American Ninja's anniversary. I definitely want to sit down with him and talk to him and maybe I'll have a an American Ninja outfit from Bakazori Crafts. Link in the, in the comments. So if you are still interested in one of these outfits, Bakazori Crafts, I'm, I'm always going to be promoting these guys because I love this outfit. This is my official outfit. Sorry. <laughs> I love it. Just way too much. I paid for the damn thing. I'm wearing it. That's all there is to it. I didn't wear it, didn't wear it yesterday because I wanted to wear the actual Ninja 3 one that I got. But I also wanted to uh, not wear the mask because sometimes it does muffle my, my voice. And so I didn't want, I didn't want us to have any communication issues between me and Sam and I didn't know how the mic would pick it up so the from zoom so anyway um this is what we're talking about 40th anniversary coming up in September uh again I wanted to get in some time with Sam now because I know closer to September he's probably going to get a lot of other YouTube channels that um that are also about these movies reaching out to him and talk to, talking to him about these movies uh yeah, I, 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 I kind of, I kind of, you know, as far as the video, what you see is pretty much everything that, you know, that transpired in the conversation. Um, it felt like just talking like one of my old buddies again, you know, so when, uh, when I started it off at the beginning, it was of him, you know, checking the light and everything. I was like, I had to keep that in, in the video because I'm like, that is. That is a director's mind, making sure the light's good and everything and the camera angles. So I was like, I had to do it, you know. And even though Sam was like, you know, go ahead and embarrass me with questions. I was like, I, hopefully I didn't embarrass him with that because I just thought it was kind of cool that, you know, even though he's retired from being a director, you know, he's still looking for good camera angles, the lighting, everything, making sure that it's all, you know, that it's all primo. So without further ado, if you haven't gotten Ninja 3 already on uh, on Blu-ray, go get it now. Uh, if you want to support the channel, which you can do so by getting one of these. So uh, I know I'm pushing these out a little bit more because I think it's a cool shirt. Hopefully y'all do too. It's pretty pretty plain and simple, you know, but it does support the channel. So if you want to support me, if you like the channel, Buy a shirt, please, if you want to. <laughs> I'm not going to beg, but if you want to buy one, buy one. I think it's kind of cool. I, I think it would be kind of cool to see it at conventions and stuff. Sam has one. So, uh, anyway, let's get right into it, folks. Shadow Warrior Collectors, it's time to continue on with part two of the Sam Furstenberg interview. Let's watch it go. Now, back to Ninja 3. Um, I know I've got some other questions that, that I've got some of my buddies and subscribers that are going to be asked, that I'm going to ask you here too. But sure. this one's been on my mind uh, for a while. Were there any 
ideas or plot points to the Ninja 3 storyline that didn't make it to the finished movie that you wished as a director had been in there? Like maybe a Sam Furstenberg director's cut of Ninja 3? Here's what, what happened. In Canon, the, the company that were producing those movies, there was a policy that movie will not go over 95 minutes. Ah. So this was a policy of the company. The 95 minutes idea, 90 to 95 minutes, has some roots in it because the, it fits exactly to four screening in the theater or five screening. If the movie is longer, they are losing one screen, the theater. So, you know, when they have a movie of two and a half, uh, two and a quarter, two and a half hours, they lose one screening. 90 minutes fits into four or five times, depends on the time slot, right? But they are losing a screening. So they sell less popcorn, et cetera, et cetera. Secondly, 95 minutes fits exactly into, 90, into two hours of television show with the commercial. So that's another consideration. So 95 minutes from a commercial point of view, from sales point of view, it's good for selling to theater and selling to television. So this was canon. They were adamant about it. When we came back with Revenge of the Ninja, with Ninja 3, with Electric Boogaloo, we always, the first cut, the first, when we finish first editing, two hours, two and a quarter. Now we have to sacrifice a few things. And, and I'm saying it in two ways. One, one thing is not every scene works well. Sometimes, you know, even if everybody on the set has the best intention, when you come back to the editing room and you put it together, they don't work or they don't work as well as the other scene. So if you have to sacrifice something, even if it doesn't kill the plot, the story, you sacrifice the scenes that are not so great. Then you sacrifice the, the scenes that will not alter the plot, will not change the plot too much. So what I remember from Ninja 3, there was a huge flashback. Backstory, Shokasugi with his father and the bad ninja and uh, David Chang. And there was a huge battle and a story about family feuds, two ninja families feud, two groups. And that's why Shokasugi is losing his eye in the in this. And he has a revenge uh, deal with uh, David Chang with the bad ninja. This had to be cut. Eventually, we cut it to short flashback. In the original story, it was a story, almost like a story element, not a flashback. Here, we, sh we somehow converged it to sh flashback. Shokasugi is thinking about it at some point. The other thing, one more scene that I remember that Sho mentioned in this interview, he, he choreographed or concocted the fight by the swimming pool. He always had, he always had gimmicks and ideas and this idea was that he will fight with towels, with wet towels, and use the wet towels as a throwing element. And uh, he choreographed the fight, and there, so some villain characters are coming to the to a hotel to assassinate him because he came from Japan, so he stays in hotel. <laughs> and uh, some uh, villains are coming in to assassinate him, and there was a fight sequence that did not end up in the movie ah. for time reasons for i don't remember what reason but there are still photos from this uh, fight and video because i saw Even video i never saw a video but i saw still photos i saw that there was a there's a trailer there's an old trailer for ninja 3 out there along with along with revenge and I saw some of the the extra scene there with with Shokasugi with his father and and all the ninjas yeah. Um, I know one of my buddies asked asked that question. Well, as well. I know. That I know. But it, it was it was crazy. I actually just saw that trailer two days ago, and I was like, I was like, one of that was one of the original trailers, and I was like, holy smokes! You know that would have been. So, so sometimes the trailers are done before we we pare down the movie, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, and but I still I am telling you, it still exists as a flashback. He remembers what happened before he confronts the bad ninja. And but the swimming pool, the the fight with the towels, then does it's not in the movie anymore. But there are stills. <laughs> there are some photos from this fight with the towels. 
but there might be others that I don't remember. 40 years, as you said, and so many years. Oh, yes. <laughs> there might be other <laughs> scenes that which are not did not end up in the movie, and I don't remember anymore. Uh, but, you know, we left. Uh, in Revenge of the Ninja, there was a decapitation, which is not in the movie. We got uh, X-rated. There was a sequence of killing a policeman on the roof, which we had to cut out because of the X-rated. Uh, so sometimes no, it's not only us that uh, decide to cut. Sometimes, you know, when when the movie went to the rating system, uh, there is a committee. They send you back uh, the movie with notes. And sometimes we had to take out things be because they didn't like it in order to get the R rating. So that those are another reason that few things are missing. I still also on my on my Pakistani poster, and I saw it in the trailer. There's a guy in a white suit with a sniper rifle for Revenge of the Ninja. Yeah, yeah. and he gets yeah. and he gets killed. Yeah. <laughs> but it was so, too brutal for them. It was an arrow through the neck. Arrow goes into oh. the neck. So oh. it was too brutal for the for the uh, commission for the board, the rating board. <laughs> uh, there was the little boy getting shuriken in his head. Is yes, it? Shane taking the shuriken to the head. Shane, yeah. <laughs> but this is out. Violence against children is not allowed. So, oh, I'm sorry, you're going to say? No, no, I said that, that. So that this is another reason why things were cut out and they are not in the movie anymore. Now, because uh, Kenner went bankrupt at the end of uh, the end, the, the fate of the company was bankruptcy. So we don't know where all the outtakes, I don't know, oh. they were in some warehouses, who knows? So people were looking for the outtakes of Revenge of the Ninja. And we had a lot of contact uh, with MGM, not only myself and uh, other people. Who, and MGM, which today owns the movie, it's now Amazon, but anyway, they, look, they looked for it and they said, but they didn't have, they have, all they have is what so-called the final cut negative. You know, because when everything was, all the decisions were final, then the original negative was cut and spliced with, with the glue. Mm -hmm. And this was given to MGM. They don't have the outtakes and everything which we did, not, did not end up in this. So if, all the scenes which you know, they were put in cans and they were probably put in some warehouse. I don't know. And since Canon went bankruptcy and mm -hmm. maybe they didn't pay the warehouse anymore and somebody threw it away. I, yeah. Nobody knows. So MGM was looking for the missing scenes of Reve of Ninja Three: The Domination, and they couldn't find it. Mm. That's why I want to win the lottery. <laughs> so we, can, <laughs> we can buy some of that and get back into it. <laughs> so we cannot uh, we cannot recreate the two hour version. Exactly. <laughs> so, do you feel like today with how Hollywood is, with all the changes that has been done? Uh, do you think that Ninja 3 would be a different movie if it were made today? You know, definitely. Because uh, I'll tell you, nowadays, the economy of Hollywood nowadays, because of many, many reasons, streaming and any other, is divided into two groups, especially action. We're talking, we're talking all the movies. Either it's a big, it's a big studio event movie with big name stars, which get 20 million, 30 million for budget. I mean, you do Barbie, you do whatever, Oppenheimer. Big budget, big movie, uh, The Fast and the Furious, 100 million, you know, and go and spend it. Or the other part is very minuscule, small movies. There is no way to make money to make profit on the medium-sized movies. So if people make today a movie where the budget is 5 million or 6 or 8 million, which is equivalent to the type of movies that we made then for 2 or 3 million, there is not enough selling power or buy, buying power to recoup the investment and make profit. So the action movies became very small. And and And... By with the use of of uh, uh, optical effects, co computer, digital generator effect, you can make it uh, smaller. There is a possibility to make it smaller, uh, a smaller budget. So to make Ninja Three: The Domination, which was eight week shooting, two units, uh, about two and a half million dollar budget, three million budget in the eighties, 
I don't think it will be done. So either somebody would have do, somebody will do a tremendous big movie with special effect galore when a big actress name with two big famous uh, recognizable name actors, or it will be done in a very, very small budget which will not have enough action. You know, our rule, John, was that half of the movie, 45 minutes, minimum 45 minutes will be pure action. And story only for <laughs> 45 minutes story. When you don't have budget and you have only five weeks or four weeks to make a movie, you have to <laughs> produce a lot of dialogue scenes to fulfill the 90 minutes. So you get 10 minutes, 15 minutes of action, 20 minutes of action. But to produce 45 minutes of action plus more than 45 minutes, you need money there is, and time. Right. So as Back to your question, the economy of filmmaking today in Hollywood will not allow either Revenge of the Ninja, American Ninja, Ninja Tree, the Domination to be made. Either huge movie or very small, uh, small movie that is pretends to be action, but it's not really, I don't call them action movies. <laughs> For real. <laughs> so we, we talked about you know, 40 years these these movies have been around for, and they still have an effect on people today. And I've noticed uh, an uptick in ninja fandom and also seeing like there's some new shows coming out. I know that Netflix has got this show called House of Ninjas coming out soon. Shogun's coming back, but this time it's kind of looks like it's been revamped a little bit or, or, or had some changes to it, but it's going to end up on Hulu. And then, of course, what we talked about earlier with, with Shokasugi with his Q&A, and Mike Stone is now even talking about, you know, his time in Ninja movies as well. Uh, but, yeah, you know, looking at it now, and when, when, you were, when you did these movies, did you ever think, 40 years from now, we're going to be talking about these movies? Or did you just think, hey, like, like you said, you, movies made and then sometimes are forgotten. Did you just think that it was going to be in the past, in the wind? Not in my wildest dream. <laughs> <laughs> Again, most of movies, they disappear in the, I call it the abyss of time, <laughs> tunnel of time. They go and then they disappear. Some movies survive. Rocky, Casablanca, Gone with the Wind, obviously. So some, not necessarily big budget. Rocky was a very small budget movie. Or oh, Casablanca, both of them are simple of small budget movies that survive the years because they are good movies. But 90% of movies which are done in the world are kind of disappearing in this tunnel of time. And the more time passes, they, they go backward more and more deep into the cave. Of course, there are film fans and historians, but I'm talking about audience. So uh, when we made those movies, we were sure that it's the same, the same type of, the same fate will happen to those movies, they will disappear in the, the in my wildest, wildest dreams. I did not uh, think that 40 years later, I will be 73 and I will sit here and talk with you. And there will be a screening, as I told you next week, uh, breaking to electric boogaloo. Uh, there was last year, there was a screening in Times Square of Revenge of the Ninja. I 40, saw years, yes. 40 years for Revenge of the Ninja in Times Square in New York. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, I was invited just before the pandemic to a screening of uh, here in, in a theater in Los Angeles in a theater to Ninja 3 The Domination real screening uh, with the 35 millimeter print full house people came dressed in ninja outfit just like you I have the photo <laughs> nice and of course many people came to get my signature autograph and the audience in the crowd, because, you know, Ninja 3 became a cult movie. It's kind of a cult movie because the, the strangeness of it and the quirkiness of it, it became a cult movie. So the audience are sitting in the crowd and they know all the lines by heart. Oh, just, yeah. like, just like the room, you know, and they they bounce the lines of the of their actors to the screen. I was amazed. I couldn't believe people in costumes <laughs> sitting there and bouncing lines with the screen and... Uh, they have comment loud, you know, the screening was loud and rowdy, <laughs> full house. So, yeah, 
You're right. I, 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 the, the answer to your question, no, we did not dream that this will happen. And it's awesome. It, you know, it, it is for all of us because, again... The... So, for me, it's a surprise, this resurrection. And it did not happen in the first year. In the first 50, those movies really kind of died. The Ninja, Revenge of For the first 10 years, let's say we're going through the 90s and the early 2000s, they disappeared. And then suddenly, 15 years ago, I would say 15 years, I started to see very... Uh, this movement started slow, but then it got big. The tie got bigger and bigger of this uh, nostalgic <laughs> resurrection type of bringing back those movies. I know other movies also, which I did not direct, but but that's part of this tie, part of this movement. And I was very surprised. I'm still surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's for me, the, the I was always into the movies when I was younger and then the I, I again yes like like you said around the 90s and 2000s I was you know playing guitar and I was I used to build rifles I, I used to build uh, guns yeah. here in Texas and got older and then I ended up wanting to you know go back and look at some of the stuff that I had in storage because I had to move I had a uh, I had a heart attack and that which led to a triple bypass and so when I when I had that thing, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to try and be a little bit better of a person than I was before. And and so I started going through my storage and I started finding my old ninja stuff. And I was like, you know, I I still love these movies. I'm going to go back and watch them again. While I was in the hospital waiting to get to get my surgery, I'm sitting there watching Revenge of the Ninja on my phone. <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, after that, I started getting back into the fandom again. And I met one of my buddies, Jamie, who... Um, who had a ninja toe, a ninja sword. And, and I said, I'll buy it off of you. But uh, I was like, man, I better survive this surgery because that's going to show up in the mail next week. So I need to do this. <laughs> so I hope it helped you. <laughs> so it was great. And then, you know, I just got back into it. And, you know, the fandom is just amazing. Met a lot of great friends through it. And then, of course, being able to sit down and talk with you today and, and having this opportunity, yeah. it's just, it's mind blowing for me to be able to to, to have and, this opportunity. So, and you mentioned that you have some question from from uh, I other do. people. Yeah. So, speaking I'll of, be happy to answer. So, I have uh, Anton Gordiev from Bacazoy Crafts. Uh, he's actually the tailor of this outfit here. Wow! And then uh, also my buddy Tim Broussard. They both kind of asked the same question, and it's actually about this outfit. So the Ninja 3 evil black ninja costume is iconic for most of us ninja film fans. Do you know what the concept was behind this costume? Was it created for a desert environment or was it just something to be different from the protagonist? Or Yeah, you're right. Traditionally, if you go back to the Japanese tradition, ninja is a, is a Japanese mythology. It's part of, part of the Japanese culture, Japanese mythology, Japanese history. So it's Black, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know. The, the uniform, the costumes of the ninja are black, to the best of my knowledge. I'm not an expert, but I had to read a few books. I had to read. The Chokasugi <laughs> made me read a few books about ninjas and ninja history, etc. And uh, yes, but uh, when we uh, were ready to do Ninja 3 The Domination, we decided with the people, with the art department, with the costumers, with the wardrobe people, that to distinguish, to, to, to make this a little bit different, we will have the evil guy, the bad ninja, wear this kind of military desert type of uh, ninja outfit. I, by the way, this matured in American Ninja. The costume really got to, to the best level, this uh, military ninja. In American Ninja later, but uh, yes, so so this was the decision to distinguish between them, to to give him some character, to 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 the baddies, to the bad guys, and and we came up with this kind of uh, of ninja. Uh, as a director of a movie, there is a, when a director prepares a movie, there are a lot of suggestion coming in, because many many creative people work in a movie. Art department, uh, special effects, uh, costumes, etc. Many creative people work in the movie, and they like 
to come to the director with ideas. And, uh, and as a director, you either listen, you don't listen, you <laughs> accept some of those ideas, you veto other ideas and et cetera. I, I like to work with a group of creative people. I, I really like it very much. And when I see him, when I hear good idea, I, I embrace it, I take it. So for me, I've mentioned to you before, John, to, for me, the ninja movies were not pure martial art movies. In my fantasy, in my world, those are James Bond ninjas. <laughs> Let's put it this way, okay? So, for me, this is a good idea. I don't have to stick. My frame mind, the, my, my imagination is that I don't have to stick to the martial art, pure martial art uh, conventions. I want to open the movie to bigger audience. So, when somebody came to me with this idea of military uniform ninja, I was very happy. I said, wow, that's a great idea. I really like it. Let's do it. Let's, and, and uh, you know, by the way, in the movie Ujimbo, it's not totally <laughs> original. In the movie Ujimbo, that everything is sword, sword, sword fight, and suddenly the bad, the bad samurai pulls out the gun mm -hmm. at, the, at the final fight. So <laughs> even Kurosawa embraced this idea that we have to, we have to open it up from from only uh, swords and uh, so i remember you know the, the, there was the the good samurai and the best samurai and suddenly in the middle of a fight he pulls out a gun out of out of the his <laughs> I remember that <laughs> <laughs> he was he was thinking outside the box <laughs> so here we go it's not totally total but but this was my wish not to do a martial art, pure martial art, or Hong Kong martial art type of a movie, but rather I would like the movies that I make to play for the kids in Indonesia, the kids in Sweden, the kids in uh, Mozambique, wherever it goes, so they can identify. And for most of the people in the world, cinema is Hollywood. Hollywood is cinema. They understand, everybody knows the language of the Hollywood type of cinema. Not everybody understands Ingvar Bergman, you know. So that, that's so if you stay in this West, I this was my belief in the track of the Western type of movie making, it will be accepted more readily around the globe for everybody, the language, the cinematic language of everyone. Awesome. So my buddy Brandon Seidel, I know that we talked about earlier about the mask, the Braden mask, and then also, you've got the 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 helmet and uh, and the uh, boombox, and then you also got one of those as well. The Dokasugi uh, gave me. But my buddy Brandon Seidel, he was asking because he's a prop guy like I am. We were all in, about movie props and costumes. Yeah, yeah. Were there other movie props that you either wanted to take home but didn't, or did you have some props that you considered like your bucket list props that to have from your movies or? Okay, if we go back to the, to your question about the resilience of those movies or the longevity of these movies, because we didn't believe in the longevity of these movies, I didn't see any 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 use of collecting or taking or the mask appealed to me, so I took the mask. The only <laughs> thing I took from the range of the ninja is the mask. There is a photo of me in the mask. You can use it. The, so those the, the only thing that appealed to me. The radio, I took the radio because I have three daughters. At the time, they were kids. They were <laughs> little. They wanted a boombox. So I bought it from the movie. You know, they usually, they sell the props. At the end of the movie, the company sells the props uh, for a little bit money. The one big thing that I took from Revenge of the Ninja was I bought one of the motorcycles. The three motorcycles. There is the chase uh, with the, on the car. Uh, Steve Lambert is on top of the police car and they are chasing the motorcycles on the dirt road. Oh, yeah. And one of them goes into the water, one of the motorcycles. So one of those three motorcycles I bought. <laughs> but it, awesome. Not for a pro, not as a prop, you know. You don't, uh, you don't uh, necessarily <laughs> identify it with the movies. It's just a motorcycle for many, I used for many years. I don't have it anymore. Oh. And, and the helmet, I don't remember why I, I still have the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> on the, this uh, this uh, telephone company, the Bell company. I don't know why I had it. No, I did not. From uh, American Ninja we did in the Philippines, I did not bring anything back from the Philippines. Nothing. Gotcha. 
And as I told you, the shirt, this uh, belt buckle, I got as a gift from Shoka Sugi. He was selling it in the, in the little uh, red boxes. Oh, yeah. He manufactured them and, sell, and sold them. So everybody who wanted, maybe I bought it from him or maybe he gave it to me as a gift and, uh, and <laughs> from Sho. And he, at the end of Revenge of the Ninja, he gave me the double sword, long katana and a long sword, uh, a samurai sword, not a display sword, samurai sword, not a ninja, nothing to do with ninja. No, I, 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 I have posters. I have uh, some of the scripts. I was looking for a script of Riverbend. I couldn't find it. I have the script of, uh, and, and I kept the storyboards, which are the most interesting. Oh. And I have a few pages of the storyboard, but I maybe one day I will scan the entire storyboard. It's also like a book, like a little booklet of all the action sequences of uh, uh, Avenging Force and American Ninja, maybe also Revenge of the Ninja. So, the, the, so, but, so those are personal. Uh, Articles, reviews. I found that stuff more interesting than props. <laughs> At the time, I didn't think, again, I, who, who would have thought about it that it will, some people would, would be, be collecting yeah. it nowadays. I we didn't <laughs> think about it, such a thing. <laughs> so, a buddy of mine, Michael Lohr, he asked Of all the canon films you directed, what was your favorite filming location? What well, I will tell you guys that the my favorite movie from canon days location wise and as a movie is uh, the movie uh, avenging force in new orleans uh, shooting filming in new orleans and the surrounding in the bayous was very very interesting challenging very visual visually interested so and and the movie itself in terms of story, plot, and action is better, I would say, better than all the ninja movies. Really? In, in action, in the, in the type of action that was concocted, of course, the, the story is tied. The story was written by James Booth, the British actor, James Booth. And he's also one of the characters in the movie. And uh, some great acting, John Ryan, John P. Ryan, great, great acting and challenging. We were in the swamps for two weeks in the rain, in the water for two weeks, two and a half weeks, <laughs> fighting, 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 day and night, night and day with rain machine, rain coming on top of us. Uh, was very technically challenged. The fight sequences are very interesting. Uh, we had to recreate the Mardi Gras. It's not a real, it's not a real one. We recreated the Mardi Gras with thousands and thousands of extras. Uh, so it was the, the, the most interesting and challenging and interesting. And, uh, and I also believe it's a, it's a good movie. It's, it, it did not, uh, it does not uh, have the popularity and success of the Ninja movies by all means, <laughs> definitely not the American Ninja, but, uh, but still I think it's a solid, solidly good movie, really. My buddy, the, the, the story is so tight. You know, we didn't change like one word in the script. The script was it was it was good to go through and through. And and it's it also is a political. It's a white supremacy. The subject is interesting. Not only the yeah, that's my feeling. That's my answer. Awesome. Well, my buddy Greg Foster from Australia, uh, he asked. Would you consider doing another ninja movie with Shokasugi or another American ninja if the offer came up to the table for you today? <laughs> Only if it would be a decent budget, high budget. There were here and there offers came over, but as I explained earlier, the economy of filmmaking with the streaming, with this whole idea of streaming. The economy of streaming has shrunk the budget of movie making to very, very small budget. So even you are mentioned that the streaming, they want to do television series, they want to do series. And I know that they have they have to because of the there is not a lot of money. You know, once in a while they have to do a Game of Thrones. They have no choice. They need prestige product once in a while. But most of the streaming is cheaply made movies 
or cheaply made television show. So, uh, you know, if a big star will come and say, you know, big star name will come and say, I want to do a ninja, American ninja. Suddenly the budget will be big. It will become an event movie. And most probably they will hire some young director who is an expert of visual effects and, uh, <laughs> and, and digital effects and not me. But uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think I'll go back and do a small little short schedule low budget ninja movie because we'll not be able to rise to the level of what we did with the low budget uh, of uh, today. And, uh, and to go and work on a small budget, the director still have to give his 16 hours a day work <laughs> because that's more or less what director spend every day, 14, 16 hours working the uh, hour day. And to do the same thing, and the results are going to be small, minuscule, little movie, not worth it. <laughs> so yes, if somebody comes with a mega budget, forty million dollars, <laughs> I'll gladly forty million dollar, I'll gladly do it. <laughs> My friend George, he asked real quick here: if you could work with anyone, dead or alive, to make a film, who would it be? Wow, that's a good question. Gee, good question. Because I I had a chance to work with some with some good actors, but uh, I will tell you the truth. It's the way the way I have to think about movies or a director. In my belief, it's the movie, the story first. It's not. It's not that. Okay, I would love to make a movie with Tom Hanks. Okay, but what? Okay, me and Tom Hanks. Let's now. What is the story? What are we doing? What? Okay, yeah. It's nice to work with good, solid actors. The tools of the director are actors. The director is not on the screen at the end of the movie. Are the, the actors who are fulfilling the ideas of the directors are the ones who you see on the screen. So any good actor, I, I just, you know, I was throwing the name, Tom Hanks. If I can work with Tom Hanks and do Private Ryan, I would love to. But first comes the story. What is the story? What 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 do we want to tell? What is the plot? What are the plot that what is the plot that we want to tell? What is the story we want to tell? Can we attach the right actors to do to do the job? Uh, and and this is the the main thing. There, I don't have some like a dream actor I want to work with, but anyway, I'm not directing movies anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Second but to the last would, question. But it uh, would be an actor who is a good actor that can deliver, uh, you know, on the specific subject. I, I didn't do, I did not do comedies, but if you do a comedy, you want a good comedian actor, right? If you do uh, action, you want um, uh, good action star actor who, can, who will deliver who, who can perform uh, the ideas that you have I, I many times I say it's like a music conductor in an orchestra a conductor stands in front of an orchestra and he makes music but he doesn't play any instrument <laughs> he's not playing the violin he's not playing the piano there are other people who perform who play and the musicians, and if he doesn't have good musicians, he, exactly. he wants to work with good musicians. He wants to work with, the, the conductor wants to work with the best violinist, the best piano, pianist. So same thing with the director. The director wants to work with the best actors that will deliver great acting on, the, on, 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 on his ideas, will execute the director's idea, ideas. Awesome. So second to the last question is from my buddy, Frank. Um, was there any plans for a Ninja 4 or was the creation of the ne American Ninja films considered to be the next chapter? So I, I, I believe so. The company, you know, we made, uh, in the company, the Canon was the company, Canon Film. We made Enter the Ninja, Revenge of the Ninja, Ninja 3, The Domination. Then uh, I was a little bit busy. They they uh, entrusted me in my hand to do Breaking to Electric Boogaloo. 
And but the the buyers, when we say buyer, you know, the foreign distributors would buy movies from the company. So let's say uh, uh, some uh, German distributors, um, uh, Chinese distributor, whatever, they come to the company and that's that's how money is made. They buy the movie, the rights, and they pay. So I think there was a demand for more ninja. Don't give me more breaking, give me more ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> so the company wanted to do more ninja. They called me, uh, you know, called me into the office and to discuss and say, okay, we need another ninja movie, which is ninja number four. Yeah, they don't care. They, they, they make movies <laughs> to make money. So ninja number four. But this time, this was not my idea. <laughs> Again, I don't want to say, but this time we are going to make American Ninja. So we we take this revolution, this crazy idea of that we we took a ninja, a, a mythological Japanese character. First of all, we decided it's a villainous character in the in the mythology of Japan. It's not a heroic. It's not a honorable. The samurais are the heroes, the honorable people. The ninjas are the dirty villains. They are not honorable uh, <laughs> character in the Japanese history or mythology. And then, so first of all, we took this ninja, which is negative character, and we turned it into a hero, a positive character. This was the revolution number one. Revolution number two, we'll westernize it. We'll, we'll make it American. No more Japanese. Forget the Japanese ninja. Now we are going to have American ninja. Okay, so this was his idea, the, the company, Menachem Golan, the head of Canon Film. For me, it was a great idea. I, I actually thought it's a great idea because again, it goes to the thing that I was not stuck with. The, I, I don't come from the world of martial art. I was not stuck to the idea that we have to be pure, purists. And American Ninja, of course, American Ninja. We still, at that point, that early, we didn't have an idea how to... How do we build it? How do we put it together? That American ninja, what is he? Is he like a, some kind of a cowboy running on a horse? We didn't have any idea. Later <laughs> on, it came to the idea of the military. But the answer is yes. In, from a commercial point of view, from a co corporation point of view, this is ninja number four. But it became a, a new franchise by itself. Just had, so happened. And they, they came out amazing. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is very popular. American Ninja, are very, very, very popular. Now, the last question comes from my buddy Greg, who's also on YouTube. Uh, he asked, Was there a backstory as to why the scientist and his girlfriend were assassinated at the opening of the film? Yes, I get this question a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what, if I'll find original script, maybe there was, I really don't remember. I think that this bad ninja, David Chang, was played by David Chang. I think he was hired to kill them for some reason. Nothing to do with him. He, he didn't have any personal uh, uh, vendetta against them. So just to, uh, you know, in, in all those movies, the, all the movies that I, I directed, I had this belief that we have to start with a big action sequence. No matter what. That's how the movie starts. So if you see all the movies I directed, which are action movies, they start with a big action number. If it's a dance movie, it starts with a big dance movie. So you tell the audience, it's a telegraphing to the audience, you tell the audience, you are in the right place. You are sitting in the right seat. You are going to see an action movie. Don't worry. Or you are going to see a dance movie, okay? But uh, we're doing the action. So it had to open with an action movie. The action movie, by the way, James Bond always starts the same way. Every James Bond starts with a big action movie. The opening action movie don't necessarily have to be connected to the story later. The story starts, the plot starts after the first opening action sequence. But there is some connection. Okay, this is the bad ninja. Uh, he's connected. Later on, he will die and his spirit will move into Lucinda. So I think, if I remember cor correctly, he was hired as an assassin just to kill those scientists. Nothing to do with him, which is an excuse for me. It was an excuse for a big action sequence at the beginning. That's it. <laughs> 
nothing else. And <laughs> uh, an amazing and action sequence. Revenge of the Ninja starts with a big action sequence in Japan. Yes. It ties in later to the story, but really it's, 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 a, it's a piece by itself. The story starts when they arrive in America. When Shokasugi and his kid, they arrive in America, that's the beginning of the story. So, uh, and so on and so on. <laughs> Uh, Ninja, uh, American Ninja number two starts with motorcycles. They arrive into a bar. There is a big fight in the bar. You don't know why, what, where. Then you see one of them is, a, they, they kidnap one character. And uh, American Ninja, same thing. The convoy goes out on the way, out of the, in the jungle. Big action sequence. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, uh, the answer, I think there was a reason it was, clearer and more but because as we mentioned before we had to trim down our movies to 95 minutes maybe the reason was taken out the, the explanation was taken out i don't remember today gotcha so any projects that you're working on aside from uh what you did with with uh riverbend is there anything coming up in the pipeline that you you plan on taking or on, taking on or anything or no, I, I'll tell you, uh, John, most of my project, if it's film project, they, they had to do with the preservation of the legacy of the movies of the 90s. I was in the last few years, I was involved in many projects. I was involved in the uh, writing a book. I didn't write a big book, Stories from the Trenches. Did you see it? I'll show you. One second. You will edit it later. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, wow. Is that still available for purchase? Yeah, yeah. Amazon, easy. I'm getting one. It's called <laughs> Stories of the Trenches. <laughs> okay. And it's uh, it's written by uh, Marco Sidelman. He wrote this book. It's a book of interviews. It's, he, he, he's a reporter. It's a book of interviews and many, 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 many photos from oh, the movies. Folks. That I directed. So it, it is about the 80s, but it's about the movies of the 80s, but the framework is the movies that I directed. Awesome. But it deals with, with the independent, low budget genre movies of the 80s in general. So sometimes if it comes, I'm involved in something like this, writing, uh, writing a book. But there is a lot of project. I'm invited to many festivals. Of course, there was the pandemic in the middle that stopped that. But I'm invited to many festivals. I'm invited to screenings. I'm invited to or, or interviews like you, just like what we are doing right now. I'm doing a lot of this kind of interviews. Now, in the last two years, I'm busy in restoring the movie Riverman with the uh, with Steve James, which was a project that I really wanted to do for many years because I I, I, I was very sorry that the movie disappeared. Because it's an interesting, very interesting movie, very interesting movie, and and uh, I'm proud of it. So now we are busy with restoring it and uh, preparing a, a Blu-ray. We created three new posters from the movie. We we are not using the old posters of the of movie. So we created three new posters, and uh, they look fantastic. One of I saw them on your Facebook. I saw yes. the posters. Yeah. We can uh, we can display them when you do the editing uh, and and uh, so on. So really, I'm I'm concentrate. I, I it's not that all I do from the from the moment I w wake up in the morning. Of course, <laughs> I have grandchildren. I, I I disclose to you that I build furniture. That's my hobby, carpentry. <laughs> I design and build furniture. And uh, and uh, no, but that that's what I I'm not involved in movie projects that will become movie directing. It's hard work. It's very hard work. If you really put the, your heart into it, it takes it takes almost a year of your life and many many hours. And if if I don't believe that the results are going to be great, I'm, at my age I don't need to. Be to get into it. <laughs> I'm already on social security so, and pension. I'm okay. <laughs> well, I must say, my friend, you have, like I said, you've really, uh, your contributions to, to movies, 
just as a whole, not even just ninja movies, but as a whole, I mean, your contributions are amazing. I mean, I'm I'm really grateful that you took the time with me today and as well as, you know, sharing with us a little bit of Ninja 3 history. And I hope that hope that when American Ninja comes up that we uh we revisit again. <laughs> By all means, I, I, I'm happy. Uh, uh, I'm happy that you have invited me, and uh, I'm. I hope that we answer questions, all the questions, oh, and we did indeed. We found some. Every time I tell stories, I remember another little piece of, <laughs> of the puzzle that I, you know, as again I say, it's forty years uh, passed by, and. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. To thank me. you. Thank, I really appreciate your time, Sam. I mean, this was, I was looking forward to this. It was like last night, my neighbor's car alarm was going off like all hours of the night. And I was like, I'm not going to get any sleep. And I'm, I got to make sure that I get some sleep because I did not want to like be all droopy eyed talking to you. I did have my three rescue cats that are running around, my three rescue kittens running around here. So uh, that's why every once in a while you see me looking like, don't do it <laughs> over no, but, to the but, side here. But really, as you say, people who are interested, they can visit my Facebook page, which is yeah. Sam Furstenberg. I have a website, samfurstenberg.com, uh, Instagram, and I have a YouTube channel. And in the YouTube channel, there are a lot of interviews like this or reviews of the movie and interviews. So if people are interested, same thing, uh, Sam Furstenberg YouTube channel. And there is this book that I've mentioned, it's great if somebody wants to read stories. I will definitely be posting a link to that. And uh, since we, you probably we close and you can cut it. I will send you a link to a Dropbox folder with pictures of uh, Ninja Three: The Domination or any other picture, any other pictures you are interested to use. I appreciate it. And uh, of course, you can download from the internet the posters of uh, River Band if you are, if you want. Uh, you know. Uh, anything that you see things. that you would like, or you have the pictures of me with the, uh, you know, Frank Nussel, there is this guy. There is a website, there is a page which is dedicated only to Ninja 3, the domination. I don't know if you saw it. Yes. But by, two, by, by an English couple, they are right. Yes. Yeah. But Frank Frank is one of the guys that asked about Ninja right. 4. Right. Frank, my buddy, so. Frank. <laughs> so Frank asked me to take a picture with the boombox, with the helmet together. He so there is that picture, picture yes. Interested <laughs> either it's on the internet or I will, I can uh, also again send it to you through the messenger. Uh, this picture of the boombox and the and the helmet. Yeah, this is the only thing I have from Revenge of the Nin uh, from Ninja Three: The Domination. Those those three little things. Those th three, those two little things. And as I told you, I used to have the motorcycle. I don't have it anymore. Awesome. <laughs> One of the three motorcycles. <laughs> one of them went into the into, into the, the drink <laughs> I really appreciate it Sam thank okay, you so Julie, much for spending this pleasure. time with me so really I will appreciate. send you I will send you the link okay. to the messenger and if you have any other photo or that you want ask me and I will send it to you okay I appreciate it thank Adios, you so amigo. much you take care you too Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. -bye.